Hello again, I'm Ed O'Keefe, Senior White House and Political Correspondent for CBS News, reporting from CBS News New Hampshire Primary Headquarters in Manchester, where just before this primary, yet another contender is out. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is calling it quits. So what will New Hampshire's primary goers tell us about the state of the race? Remember, those that vote in Republican primaries here in the Granite State are a bit more socially moderate and maybe fiscally focused than they were in Iowa last week. So we'll be keeping an eye on whether that has anything to do with the final decisions voters make here. The other thing to watch, does the former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley now stand to benefit from Ron DeSantis dropping out of the race? Or does all of that governor's support go to former President Donald Trump, given that they were so closely aligned on so many issues and polling had shown us for quite a while that the second choice of many DeSantis voters has always been Mr. Trump. We'll see. For some perspective on what's been going on here in New Hampshire and what we might be able to expect, we talked with CBS News political correspondent Caitlin Huey Burns, who's been here for a while assessing the field and listening to voters, trying to get a sense of what they want from the next president of the United States. Now, Caitlin Huey Burns, you've been here in New Hampshire Hi. since the start of all this. Great good to, to see you. Yeah, good to see you in person finally yeah. after all this time. Uh, what's going on up here? It's cold, but not as cold as Iowa, so I can't complain. Um, it does not feel as busy as you and I are used to. I mean, we've covered a lot of campaigns here. In the final stretch, you can't go anywhere without seeing a candidate usually. This time it feels a little more muted, and that's mostly because it's kind of narrowed down to really two candidates, yeah. Nikki Haley and Donald Trump. And they are just starting to intensify the attacks against one another in these final days. Um, but they're also competing for, you know, a really different set of voters. So we really haven't seen a lot of overlap here at this point. The big difference we're always reminded between Iowa, which went first, and New Hampshire, which likes to say it goes first, it's a whole thing, is that <laughs> New Hampshire's primary is open to independent voters or yeah. Democrats who change their registration to either independent or Republican by early October, despite what former President Trump says. So whereas Iowa was closed to just Republicans and there's such a socially conservative base out there, it's a far different set of people they're after here in New Hampshire, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's why you see candidates who are kind of licking their wounds from Iowa come to New Hampshire and say, hey, this is a different kind of place. I can compete here. And we've seen some have success. Donald Trump was actually one of them in 2016. We want to thank the people of New Hampshire, right? Do we love the people of New Hampshire? Remember, he lost Iowa, even though he said he didn't, came here to New Hampshire uh, and was able to really tap into independent voters here. He won independent voters. They play a real outsized role, as we've been talking about, 40 percent of the electorate here. Uh, you know, we have some that lean Democratic, some that lean Republican, and then some who are persuadable. And that's kind of the group that Nikki Haley's been really trying to go after here in the final days, especially. This is about do you want more of the same? Or do you want something different? Voters who are kind of looking, as she says, to turn the page from Trump and Biden. The Americans don't want to see a Biden-Trump rematch. The majority of Americans disprove of both of them. The question, though, is, is are there enough of them? Being able to look up to a woman who is taking a leadership role is really important. We were at the same place, I think, when Hillary was running. We saw her. So I just would like to see a woman get, get up to be president. I think we need some youth, we need some vitality, and we need some common sense and some moderation. And I don't see that from either of these, those other candidates. There's too much polarization. I want people coming together. And I'm, I have hope for, um, for that with Nikki. So you came in here undecided. Correct. And after meeting her, did you make up your mind? I did. I did. Um, definitely voting for Nikki Haley. So you made up your mind right here in this booth after meeting her and asking her questions. Correct. That is the New Hampshire way. They take this very seriously. I mean, this time around, every voter I've talked to is pretty, you know, they're, they are not enchanted by any of their choices. But they still are all planning to vote, everyone I talk to. I know several Republicans that I know personally that are not going to vote for Trump, ever. And, uh, 
So, so I, I, I think that Nikki Haley will do fairly well. Yes, you talk to supporters of Donald Trump, they are very excited about him, especially coming after Iowa. Very excited to see New Hampshire as a place to just lock this nomination up, get on with it. Um, but talking to everybody else, it's, it just feels like they don't have a lot of options. Um, Anybody but Trump. I think he's an honest guy, um, and what he says, he did. I think we love each other. So it's good. It's it's just, good. I just laugh because when he says he's an honest guy, which I think opposite. Strength is that he's already done a fantastic job, and uh, for me, that's kind of Nikki Haley's biggest weakness is that we don't know what she's going to do, whereas I know what Trump is going to do, and that's kind of uh, the biggest selling point for me. She has some strong points, but there's a lot of things that I think she's done in her past that don't exactly align with the values of a lot of people in this town and in the state of New Hampshire. To me, you're insulting me. And by you going with these never Trumpers that are big business, you're not looking out for me, you're not looking out. And I feel that Trump, he looks out for our the little the worker bees. You know, we've been working all our lives. So I think his policy, I just don't feel she's there. I felt our country was safer. Um, you know, we didn't pay as much for gas and everything else we're paying for. So I, and you know, and we didn't have wars going on. So I feel he's a better choice. Um, I'm afraid that Nikki might be, I don't know. I went to see her in November here in Nashua and, um, and I liked her, but I don't know. What to you has been the thing you've heard the most from voters over the course of the last week in terms of what they're worried about? People feel just really uneasy about everything. I mean, the, they, you know, immigration comes up over and over again. Fentanyl, of course, is a big issue here in New Hampshire specifically. We're so far away from the southern border, but that's why it's an issue here. Let's talk about immigration. You are being pummeled in this state by Donald Trump with flyers, I've seen them, and on TV. Uh, Donald Trump and his supporters are saying that you are too weak and too liberal to fix the border, that you have refused to call migrants criminals. Donald Trump has lied in every single commercial. When I was governor, I passed the toughest illegal immigration law in the country. President Obama sued me over it and we won. So if anything, what I've said is we need to go harder on the border. People feel kind of um, are concerned about, you know, safety, the future for their kids, the economy. This it's, whole thing seems to be on a glide path. It's, it's remarkable because also, as you know, I just got back from maternity leave. And so I left in August. Coming back in January, the state of the race is Not pretty much the same. Exactly. Some people have left and dropped out. There's been a little movement here and there among the second place uh, competitors. But Donald Trump has been leading far and away, commanding lead in all of these early states. Right. We were at the rally. We volunteered at the rally. We've been making telephone calls. Um, uh, a number of us have, uh, along with other folks, have gone door to door. We're going to go uh, door knocking. We're going to do the phone calling, anything to get President Trump back in. He's for the people. So the, the, the fundamentals of the race haven't really changed that much. And so New Hampshire's kind of the last stand. But if Donald Trump can lock it up here, they believe this could really be over. This is a very, very important vote. Most important question as we wrap this up. You've been in New Hampshire now a few days. Best meal you've had? Well, we have been running and gunning so much that unfortunately <laughs> we've been resorting to eating here at the Doubletree Hotel uh, restaurant. But some good coffee shops here. Uh, what have we had? We've just, you know, a lot of granola bars in the car. <laughs> this is the glamorous life of our reporting, right? We're mostly in the car, shoveling down food, trying to get to the next stop. While writing our scripts while on our phones. While writing on our phones. <laughs> so we've got some sandwiches here I think I might We might as well go find one. one. All righty. I'm Ed O'Keefe, CBS News on the campaign trail in Manchester, New Hampshire.